All right, this is Calibos, and we are playing Skybees. Uh, I have discovered a very upsetting and interesting problem. So, the problem is this. Uh, let's see if we can spot it. So, these are Ender Bees. And their block is ender iron or whatever it is it's one ender pearl and an iron ingot combined then you need nine of those to make the block of whatever that stuff is um and that's fine i don't mind that now it seems fair and whatever the problem is they eat ender pearls and if I have stacks and stacks of ender pearls, why is this a problem, do you ask? Well, because if you right click a bee with an ender pearl, you pretty much throw the ender pearl at the bee. Uh, so, I cannot feed them ender pearls to breed them because you end up attacking them every single time uh, I I'm not even sure that I still have two or whether the one that I we, we saw right there is going to like live um, for obvious reasons um, so that that is a problem attack me I, I don't know um so I will probably have to like make more of those and have to make them all the hard way but the reason this is a problem is if I must breed them with something I cannot breed them with anything. So, I, the reason I bring this up is I will probably have to cheat in terrasteel bees or anything that is above um, above this. So fortunately it's only terrasteel, so I will probably have to cheat the Terra Steel bees into the world, and I'll throw the the resources into the void, and I'll have you guys watch me do it, um, because I won't be able to breed breed them because I will be attacking them with Ender Pearls. Uh, uh, just so you're aware that that's an issue, uh, and very frustrating to me as an issue. Actually, I hate doing that. Um, maybe in later versions of the pack this has been changed. But I'm not sure that I am willing to update the pack. Uh, just at this moment. I mean, I've had a, a pause in recording and I'd, I'd like to... to not update the pack and try to keep thing going for a little while and build up a backlog and stuff. I mean, I, it's not like I wouldn't back everything up. And for me, updating a pack is I basically make a new version of the pack and then copy files over. It's not like I would just be uh, you know, throwing everything away. It's just really annoying. Um, and I kind of am not fond of doing it. Uh, but I thought that we would spend today and work a little bit on the base. Uh, kind of upgrade our storage, move things around. Because uh, now that we've got these automated, we can work 
work out some of our flooring issues. The uh, torch things, yeah. Coach torches. But we'll figure out where we want to go with some of these designs. Like we are, we basically kind of have like half had a finished base this entire time. Um, and I'd like to, I'd like to finish off kind of the main storage area here. Uh, and I'd also like to, um, Um, expand some of the other areas for a little bit of a little bit of uh, crafting and and stuff to give us room for for things. Because um, we'll need to set up more mechanism things, and we won't necessarily have to fully automate mechanism now. Um, but at some point in the near future, we are going to have to automate mechanism or a bit. Uh, we'll need to set up. Uh, a couple of different, like, we'll have to expand what our our setup is capable of. Um, let's just go all the way around, and, and then we'll just be filling it in. And filling it in is always faster than... Thing. Stuff. Thing with the stuff. suppose like if I was super you know inclined to do it I can actually set up a Corporea spark network uh, it's been a while since I've done one and I, I honestly I, I wonder if people even know what those are anymore and how to use them like I, I would be curious to see if anybody who currently watching me knows what a Corporea spark network is and how to use it properly uh, it's it's old school, but still around. So, I mean, I think at this point, um, like Blood Magic, Batania, and probably some of like the tech mods are like the oldest mods still in existence. Um, I'm not saying like nobody has heard of Corporeal Spark Networks. I'm just, like they weren't heavily used. I remember Sky Factory Two, like it was the way to go. Like Sky Factory and Sky Factory Two, and there were like videos of of people's like giant Corporeal Spark Networks. 
um, with uh, uh, mirrors and stuff uh, to drop stuff back into the system. Uh, and then they went from there, applied energistics. Sky Factory? It was a, I think it was Skyblock. Yeah, it was a Skyblock. Skyblock was it? Uh, Infinity Evolved, maybe? Yeah, Corporeus Park Networks were the default. Like, you definitely did that on the way. Um, I made the crack at one point that it was the, the Linux of Minecraft storage systems. Uh, in some ways, it was really, it's really flexible, and in some ways, not. But it looks like he's expanded the tools you can do you use it with. Um, I really like the fact that you could just ask for stuff, um, and the network would send it to you. Like you just typed it out, and and it did all of the sending. Check that out. We are making good progress. We have left. Oh, plenty. So one of the things that I I didn't have a home. I thought Trim did have a home. So one of the things that is fairly cool as far as this goes, uh, let's that. Um, I mean, we want to just keep reading up our, our stuff. In there, that goes in there. Um... You know, now that I'm thinking about it, let's take the Cirrus Quartz. Pop that in there. Lock that. Silicon, because <clears throat> we need to breed up the silicon bees quick. Post haste. All right, let's level you up like a boss. We'll go uh, main storage. Okay, we're going to put our A2 stuff in here so it's not cluttering our inventory. Dirt. Got a home there. Obsidian we can just chuck. Uh, same with stone. 
Uh, diamond chests we'll probably hold on to. We'll use them for something, I guess. Probably. Uh, Nether Quartz has a home. Uh, Fluix. We've got Fluix bees, right? Yeah, so we've got Fluix bees. Maybe what we need to do is start leveling up Fluix crystals. Uh, can we... So what we'll probably do is we'll grab all three of these. We've got Flux crystals up here. We can at least let them start breeding. So I'm not sure how much we're going to need some of these. Others of these clearly we're going to need a lot of. Uh, those are definitely going to need time to grow up as well. Okay, see how the stars are all weird and blinky like that? It basically means that there is a constellation. You now what you're supposed to do is basically connect constellations or something. Uh, but I don't know what I don't remember what the constellations are supposed to look like. So that's kind of a, a hassle and a half. Uh, and there's like a couple of constellations we're supposed to get. I have trouble with constellations in the real world. How am I supposed to... How am I supposed to know what they look like in this? Uh, so at some point we'll do this. Honestly, Astral Sorcery is one of the things that you should probably progress on in the beginning of a pack if you can. Because the end game of Astral Sorcery, uh, as annoying as it is, is, uh, you know, really makes the rest of everything functional. Like, I honestly think that Astral Sorcery kind of is... Like, it gives you stuff that is best used at the beginning. Uh, full of air. So I'm guessing... That nothing is happening here. It must all be collecting in the fluid cable. Still doing stuff. Whatever. No one cares. No one cares. Um. So speaking of which, we need a steel casing. So we're going to have to take a steel block, uh, one of these, or four of them as it were. Let's cross over to blood magic, Bye. and we'll do 
that. All witches, all the time. Listen to them scream. slow. Uh, this is why I typically would advocate for making three separate altars. So uh, you have an altar um, with the well of suffering going, and that's this one. And then you, you concentrate on runes of sacrifice, and then you want orbs of displacement. Then you have a blood orb altar uh, which is basically like uh, runes of displacement and um, blood magic uh, rune of the orbs so runes of the orb, what they do is they increase the amount that whatever orb you have in there, uh, you know, you're in your blood Wi-Fi, they increase the amount that it, it, it handles. Um, and then you have a third uh, one, which is going to be, again, displacement. And all, what displacement, displacement does is... Runes of Displacement allow you to pump blood in and out of the altar at an enhanced speed. So you make Runes of Displacement and you pump from your Sacrifice Altar into your other two altars, or other four altars, or other five altars. Um, uh, with Acceleration Runes to speed up stuff. Uh, I don't know what charging runes do. Hmm. Uh, speed runes. I think acceleration runes are uh, speed up how how many processes your your orb your your altar handles per per, per second or something like that. And the speed rune. Uh, increases how fast your altar um, handles um, like actual crafting. But you build up a, a reservoir, like you have your, your sacrifice altar, you build up the reservoir underneath so it all pulls into that and then from your sacrifice uh, uh, from that reservoir under the sacrifice altar you branch off to your other altars. Um, so yeah, I will typically have like three full-size altars uh, for like the super high-end crafting and for the highest end blood orb. Um, do we even have the, the highest end blood orb? I'm not sure that we do. Uh, maybe we do. Um... So your, your highest end blood orb. Um, and then I might have like a couple of low end altars just for the purposes of like automatic auto crafting. So I'll, I'll have like a level one altar or a level two altar really. And its entire purpose is to pump in and out like... Um, Uh, like your your tier one um, slates and stuff like that, and you know your tier two slates and your tier three slates, and I try to have different. Uh, so like you could do it on a on a tier five altar, and that's fine, but you don't want to have your crafting, for example, be. So if it's a if it's a tier 5 altar, if you're crafting your tier 1 slates there, you don't want your tier 2 slates also crafted there. 
you want to uh are your your tier two or your tier three or something like that you want to set it up because your tier one slates are always going to be like it pulls out you know your tier one slates and then you want to put in the tier two slates because uh, the only thing it's drawing out of the tier one and the tier three and maybe the tier five and so you have a different altar for your tier four and your tier two so that uh they're they're not automatically pulling out I didn't put stuff back you always put your stuff back otherwise you're gonna end up dead at some point um Uh, let's grab some gold. I think, think that we are actually going to need to grind this down. Um, but yeah, for the purposes of like auto crafting and stuff like that. So enrich gold, then we pop that in here and we get the value of eight. So that's kind of what we're. So let's drop all four of these in here and see. Allergic confuser. Um, It's not the right one. This gold gives us the machine frames, right? Wait, wait, wait. Maybe it's not enough. Um, hundred millibuckets. So for four, we're gonna need uh, forty. Gives us eight. We're gonna need a total of five. Uh, I want to like update all of these at some point, so we'll pop that into here. Yeah, one of the things that I will typically do is I'll set up one for each material that I can just feed through for auto crafting. Gosh, it's like I can count. Machine frame. Okay, so from here we want to use these to make a loop. Oh my god. Uh crafter. Want a redstone torch? That gives us a crafter. So, crafters are cool because we can. We can basically like slap this down somewhere. Uh, it doesn't especially matter where. Um, we give this bad boy power and we tell it, you know, recipe. Um, so we'll tell it this recipe slot. And then we will apply 
And so whenever it gets the stuff and has power, um, uh, whenever it has the power, uh, it's going to do this thing. So do we have a have a flux plug or something? Wait. Uh, you you pull power. You don't push power. Flux. Oh no, it's it's like um uh, it's uh ender pearl. One of them, one of them, and six points. That go to here and we go. Limited power. You now have power. Um so if we were to say do this silly thing and we go export and we look at a recipe for an importer. So we're going to need destruction, processor, and cable. So destruction. Processor, cable. No. I mean, I guess we could just have learned how to type at some point. Um, no, let's... so I would kind of set it up like this. So I would go exporter, importer, go bottles. We go that, and we go that. Up, go click, click, click. Man, look at that. It's like we know what we're doing. I mean, we probably don't, but it feels like it. Uh, and then we could go even further, and we could go another importer. We could do silly things like I don't know. I I don't know why I'm doing this again. I don't. I'm just gonna be heartbroken, I know it.
All right, so what is that? Silicon. So we'll go silicon. This is why we're going to need like several of these things. we're going to do is we're going to grab you and we're going to give you a home here uh you are going to give a home here Gonna go ahead and lock you. Lock you. Lock him up. So now theoretically it should just be going and whatever. So we can just put stuff in here and it'll do crazy things. And this is why we need to put them somewhere else, is so that we can, we can distribute uh, and have it automatically go to where it wants to go. Uh, and we can be processing a couple at a time. So looking at the time, I am like ridiculously over, ridiculously over, ridiculously. Uh, so we're going to call it here. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Extra long for, you know, just a surprise for everybody. Uh, so, yeah, if you liked it, leave me a like. If you didn't, don't. Questions, comments, concerns, they go below. Have a good night.